Today, jazz is considered an alternative or niche style of music, but historically, roughly between the year 1900 and 1960, jazz was what you would consider popular music. It was the pop music of the day. However, starting in the 50s, the jazz era began to decline as this new rock and roll music became the dominant mainstream music and eventually evolved into what we know as pop and rock music today. But even though jazz left the mainstream a while ago now, that hasn't prevented it from having a profound influence on some of the most significant artists of the last 60 years. So today we're going to look at a whole range of songs that have been influenced by jazz. And this video is actually made in collaboration with the fantastic jazz singer, educator and pianist, Amy Nolte. Amy has just uploaded a companion video to this looking at even more examples of songs inspired by jazz. So once you're finished here, do pop over and watch her video too. A band that you may not have expected to have been influenced by jazz is Pink Floyd. Floyd's keyboard player, Richard Wright, was primarily a jazz player and his love of jazz often found its way into Floyd's music, particularly with their chord progressions and arrangements. For example, as Wright explains in this clip, to complete the chord progression for Breathe from Dark Side of the Moon, he borrowed a chord that he'd learnt from Miles Davis's iconic Kind of Blue. I, I came from jazz, basically, and I love, that's my favourite, uh, that's my inspiration. There's a certain chord, which is... That is totally down to a chord I had heard on, actually, Miles Davis' album. When we're doing breathe, we got to G, and how do you get to E again? Well, again, normally you go... But um, I remember this chord, and I remember working it out at home, listening to the record, and I just thought... The chord that Wright is referring to here is this D7 sharp 9 from Miles Davis's All Blues. And just like Wright explained in the clip, you can see this exact D7 sharp 9 chord here at the end of Breve's B section, acting to guide us back to E minor for the return to the A section. Another iconic act to have been inspired by jazz music is The Beatles. Although The Beatles' primary influence was the rock and roll artists of the 50s like Little Richard, Elvis and Buddy Holly, Paul and John were also keen on the early jazz era songs, such as the American songbook classics written by the likes of George Gershwin, Cole Porter or Irving Berlin. As Paul explains in this interview, the Beatles would often infuse elements of these jazz era songs, such as their chord progressions or structures, with the more typical straight ahead rock and roll music, which is actually what often gives Beatles songs their more sophisticated edge. Uh, well, it was when I was a kid, my dad had had a jazz band when he was in his 20s, but he used to play piano at home. So I grew up listening to these songs and I love the chords and the structure. So, and I think when John and I wrote, this other stuff was always in the background. It always informed what we were doing. And it, actually, if you try analyzing the Beatles music, you see it doesn't just go off on a straight rock and roll. Some of the middles, um, from me to you, anything that you want, anything do, da, 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 that's fairly straight. But then it goes, I got arms and long to hold you. <laughs> and there's a little minor chord comes in. Like McCartney explained in that clip, the A section of From Me To You is a fairly typical rock and roll tune, built from the main four chords of the key of C major. But then when the B section arrives, the song ventures outside of the key, into the realms of F major, all thanks to what is basically jazz music's favourite chord progression, the 2-5-1. G minor 7 doesn't belong in the key of C major. This move from G minor 7 to C7 and then F major is the song actually briefly changing key to the key of F major. 
and these are the two, five and one chords of F major. This is a really common technique in jazz era songs. Shift to a new key for the B section using a 2-5-1 progression, and then shift back using another 2-5-1 progression in time for the return to the A section. In fact, From Me To You's B section is virtually identical to that of the jazz standard Satin Doll, written by Duke Ellington and Billy Strayhorn. Just like From Me To You, Satin Doll's A section explores the key of C major. But then when the B section arrives, we get this very same 2-5-1 progression in the key of F major, shifting us temporarily away from the key of C major and to the key of F major. This makes the music feel like it's ventured off into a new realm. It gives the B section its own distinct character. Now, granted, the From Me To You chord progression is less decorated and complex than Satin Dolls, but both are achieving the same effect by the same means, modulating to a new key and then back again using 2-5-1 progressions. Beyond just chord progressions, the Beatles were also interested in emulating the distinct structures of jazz songs. In the 30s and 40s, songs would often begin with an extended intro section, known confusingly as the verse. But although referred to as a verse, these sections were quite different from our modern idea of a verse section. Nowadays, an intro section will often be very, very similar to the song it's introducing. It will often be a two or four bar loop based on the main body of the song. However, these jazzy verse sections were often quite distinct from the songs that they were introducing often at a much freer, slower tempo, and using a chord progression or melody that wouldn't appear in the main body of the song. For example, with the Cole Porter classic I Get A Kick Out Of You, the main body of the song, or what would have historically been referred to as the refrain, sounds like this. That I get a kick out of you. An upbeat tempo with a catchy vocal hook and repeating sections. But the song begins with this verse, played at a much slower, looser tempo, with a distinctly different and non-repeating chord progression. My story is much too sad to be told, but practically everything... This convention of starting a song with a slow, drawn-out verse section might seem a bit odd at first, until you remember that most jazz-era songs were written primarily for stage musicals. The verse section would act as a way to set up a song, a way to transition from dialogue to music, it would establish the topic of the song before launching straight into an upbeat number. My story is much too sad to be told, but practically... Now, by the 1960s, these opening verse sections were starting to slip out of fashion, and even jazz singers would often skip over the intro and launch straight into the main body of the song. But the Beatles were still keen on a good verse section, and Paul and John made various attempts to work a jazzy verse section into their own songwriting. We would try and write, often, songs with a verse. You know the verse, as most sure. people um, would think of it as the intro. We'd say, ooh, let's try and do that. And we got near to it, here, there and everywhere, it's got a mini verse. Yeah. You know, do 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 as Paul mentions, Here, There and Everywhere begins with this brief one-off introduction, this verse, that acts to set up the song before we enter the main refrain. To lead a better life, I need my love to be here. An even better example of a Beatles song beginning with a jazz era verse section is Honey Pie from the White Album. Just like in an American songbook tune, the song begins with this free time, standalone section that sets up the premise of the song. She was a working girl, north of England way. Now she's in the big time, in the USA. And then at the end of the verse, the rhythm picks up and we launch into the body of the music. Honey Pie, you are making me crazy. As Paul explains in this quote, Honey Pie is a full-on tribute to the English music hall style, 
which in many ways was a precursor to jazz music. Both John and I had a great love for music hall, what the Americans would call vaudeville. I very much liked that old crooner style, the strange fruity voice that they used, so Honey Pie was me writing one of them. Another band that you may not have expected to be influenced by jazz is Radiohead. Particularly during the recording of Kid A and Amnesiac, Tom York was heavily inspired by free jazz musician Charles Mingus. For example, the wailing horns on Kid A's national anthem are directly inspired by the horn arrangements on Charles Mingus's Complete Town Hall album. Tom York also says Pyramid Song started as an attempt to copy Mingus's track Freedom. Pyramid Song is me basically totally obsessed by a Charles Mingus song called Freedom, and I was just trying to duplicate that really. Comparing the two tracks, little evidence of the Mingus influence can be heard in Pyramid Song. It seems that initially the two tracks did have more in common. For example, Pyramid Song originally featured the distinctive hand claps that can be heard on Freedom. But they were soon removed as, in the words of Tom, they sounded really naff. Although it seems that these hand claps may have found their way onto a later Radiohead track, We Suck Young Blood. Another jazz artist to influence Radiohead is Miles Davis. Davis's iconic experimental double album, Bitches Brew, was, believe it or not, a major influence on Radiohead during the recording of OK Computer. Now, if you compare these two albums back to back, you will certainly not hear any stark similarities. But it seems it was more the dark, uneasy atmosphere of Bitches Brew that Radiohead were attempting to channel when they made OK Computer. As Tom York puts it himself, you aim for something that you've fallen in love with and you completely miss, but you do something else with it. Although that said, there are some moments from OK Computer where you can hear some evidence of that Bitches Brew influence. For example, Tom York says that the use of electric piano on Subterranean Homesick Alien was directly inspired by Bitches Brew. I keep forgetting the smell of the warm summer air. Bitches Brew continued to inspire Radiohead after OK Computer. For example, Kinetic, which is the B-side of Pyramid Song, is based on a sample of Miles Run's The Voodoo Down from Bitches Brew. <laughs> Nowadays, jazz doesn't have a particularly big influence on modern pop music, but every now and then a jazz era song will serve as inspiration for a new pop hit. For example, in 2016, the band Train lifted the melody from Hoagy Carmichael's Heart and Soul for the chorus of their song, Play That Song. Play that song, the one that makes me go Now, today, Heart and Soul is remembered mainly as a common piano duet for beginners. But it started life in 1938 as a popular jazz tune. Heart and soul, I fell in love with you, heart and soul. And as you can imagine, Hoagy Carmichael and lyricist Frank Losser are both credited on the train song. Another jazz era inspired pop song is Candyman by Christina Aguilera. Linda Perry and Aguilera, who co wrote Candyman, have said that they were emulating the style of the Andrew Sisters, 
particularly their wartime classic, Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy. The band and now the company jumps when he plays Reveille. He's the Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy of Company B. And a more recent pop song to lift from a classic jazz artist is Anyone But Me by Joy Crooks. Love me or leave me and let me be lonely Inside my head there's a voice that controls me I'd rather be... Anyone But Me adapts the lyrics and melody from the 1928 song Love Me or Leave Me, which has been recorded over the years by many artists including Nina Simone and Bing Crosby. Love me and leave me and let me be lonely You won't believe me but I love you only I'd rather be But perhaps the style of music where jazz's influence is most powerful today is hip-hop. Both born of African-American culture, jazz and hip-hop have always blended well together. Rap artists have often used samples of jazz records as the foundation of their own songs. Perhaps most notably, in 1991, A Tribe Called Quest sampled Jimmy McGriff's version of the jazz standard on Green Dolphin Street for their track, Jazz We've Got. More recently though, jazz has had a big influence on Kendrick Lamar's music. For example, his track Sing About Me, I'm Dying of Thirst is built on a sample of Maybe Tomorrow by jazz guitarist Grant Green. Really distorted. I find nothing but trouble in my life. I'm fortunate you believe in a dream. This orphanage we call a ghetto is quite a rude. Producer Will I Am is also keen on sampling from jazz era songs. Bang Bang, which he wrote for the 2013 Great Gatsby soundtrack is based on James P. Johnson's iconic Charleston. I love her, can't leave her, forever I always need her. She lied, but I believe her, love sick, I got that fever. Also, Can't Forget About You by Nas, which Will I Am produced and co-wrote, is based on a sample of Nat King Cole's signature song, Unforgettable. When you want to kick back, straw hat on the porch when you old perhaps Want to gather your thoughts, have a cold one, brag to your brain Unforgettable That's what you are An artist whose music just oozes jazziness is Stevie Wonder Of course, the most obvious example of Stevie's jazz influence is Sir Duke which not only makes sure to name check some of the most important artists of the jazz era, but also features this iconic swing inspired shout chorus. A shout chorus is a common feature of big band music. Often near the end of the arrangement, the shout chorus would be a lively, full energy section characterised by all of the horns playing together. For example, here's the shout chorus which ends Glenn Miller's arrangement of Chattanooga Choo Choo. But beyond just Sir Duke, you can hear the influence of jazz across Stevie Wonder's back catalogue, particularly in his approach to harmony. For example, on You Are the Sunshine of My Life, for the B section, Stevie briefly modulates from the key of B major to the key of A flat major, and he does so by means of a typically jazzy 2-5-1 progression. Then a few bars later, he then returns to the original key of B major by means of another, this time more dragged out, 2-5-1 cadence. I'll finish off this video today with three more examples of songs directly inspired by jazz music. White Rabbit by Jefferson Aeroplane was inspired by Miles Davis's Spanish-infused album Sketches of Spain. The marching rhythms and exotic, mysterious atmosphere of Sketches of Spain can be heard quite clearly in White Rabbit.
Cell Phone's Dead by Beck seems to be inspired by Herbie Hancock's legendary jazz funk track, Chameleon. In fact, interestingly, despite being recorded over 30 years apart, both tracks also share the exact same drummer, Harvey Mason. And the last example we'll look at today is Burn by Deep Purple. The opening guitar riff of Burn seems to be based on George Gershwin's fascinating rhythm. Deep Purple have taken the first two bars of Fascinating Rhythm, made some small adjustments to the melody, including lowering the Gs down by an octave, and then spun out the result into a longer guitar riff. As mentioned at the start, this video is made in collaboration with Amy Nolte. Amy has just released her own video on songs inspired by jazz over on her channel, so please do go check that out and let her know that I sent you. If you can think of any other songs inspired by jazz, then do let me know in the comments. And thank you as always to all of the wonderful people who support me on Patreon, including the names you see on screen right now, and Andre Sainz Diaja, Andrew, Andrew Brown, Andrew Sussman, Stan Barrett, Austin Russell, Bob McKinstry, Brittany Parker, Cameron Olivella, Colin Aiken, Chris Cabell, Christopher Ryan, David Rivers, Donald Howard, Dr. Darren Wicks, Elena Skorchenko, Esben Hansen, Eugene Leroy, F.D. Hodor, Yula Molotona, Hamish Brocklebank, Hugo Miller, James Ko, J.A. Kokensparger, John Dye, Josh Sand, Justin Vigor, Lavender Mint Rose, Mark Height, Mark Ziegenhagen, Max O'Keefe, Melody Composer Squared, Melody Schonert, Michael Vivian, Nancy Gillard, Nathan Lawrence, Nathaniel Park, Paul Miller, Paul Paisel, Peter Dumpty, Piotr Chmielowski, Roger Clay, Sam Lynn, Scott Fenley, Sean Kennedy, Steve Daly, Stephen Lazaro, Tim Beaker, Toma Aharoni, Trisha Adams, Tim Payne, Toot, Victor Levy, Vidad Flowers, Vladimir Kodakov, and Volti.